Richard Taylor was charged with two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of his mother Carla and stepfather Alan Rutherford. They both died as a result of a 2018 fire at their Dundas home, which fire investigators at the time said was arson. Taylor denied having anything to do with the fire and pointed the police to Alan Rutherford himself. Taylor suggested Alan Rutherford could have benefited financially from Carla's death. A second interview was conducted in January 2019. But before jumping into the interrogation, let's have a moment of silence for the victims, Carla Taylor and Alan Rutherford. It's okay, I'll remember Michelle and I just, you know, so many people there, just... Okay, so I work here at the downtown location, mm -hmm. Hamilton Police Station, we're at 155 King William Street. Yeah. Okay, and I work in the major crime unit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to start by the date. Today is Monday, July 9th, 2018, and the time is four minutes after four. Um, my partner, who you met when I came downstairs, okay, yeah. he's in another room and he's okay. taking notes of what we're saying. Okay. Okay, so if you can speak slowly and clearly, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Okay. This room is audio and videotaped. There's two audio speakers on either side of your head, okay. and there's a video camera up there. Um, that's so I don't, I'm not sitting here taking notes. Yeah, yeah, and we can just have a conversation like yeah. this. Okay. Um, that door is unlocked. You're free to go at any time. Uh, this, uh, I'm sure my partners explained to you why you're here. Yeah, he said that when Alan went to the neighbors, he said Rich or Rich Rick or something like that. So, yeah. yes. Um, so, I'm here to talk to you with regards yeah. to that, and because of what he said, I have to caution you. Well, okay. I, I, that, that's what we talked about. Okay, like, yeah. so I'm going to read you that right now. Yeah. You may be charged with first-degree murder times two. You are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. And in, if you have spoken to any other police officer or to anyone with authority or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this case, I want it clearly understood that I do not want it to influence you in making a statement to understand that. Yes. What does that mean? Do you know? If in speaking to them, if they tried to persuade me that it's okay to talk. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what that is. So, um... So you're Richard Taylor. Scott Taylor, yeah. Richard Scott Taylor. So you go by Rich, Rich Jr. or? Just Rich. My dad goes by Rick. Rick. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's a Rick and a Rich. Yes. Okay. Well, some you just cleared up a lot of confusion Some people right call there. me Richie, but it's... Okay. Yeah. And um, when I first met you, I started by, like, I'm really sorry yes, I know. about your mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh... What a thing to hear first thing this morning. Hey. Um, Thank you. First thing this morning. It was uh, making my kids breakfast. Okay. Who did you first hear from? My dad called, I think, um, around 8 o'clock. Um, he said that uh, a friend of his, Paul McCart, who is my, my parents have been separated for 20 years or so, um, since high school, um, one of his friends who still lives in Dundas, um, texted him and said there was a fire on Green Court on the Street. Um, he said, uh, he said to call mom to see if um, it, it was okay, like oh, it was nine houses on the street or whatever or something. Yeah. Um, I had already texted her earlier in the morning because her neighbor had offered to do a taping on my knee. I guess she's a physiotherapist, I, I don't know, the sports rap or something. And I just said I didn't think we'd be able to make it. So, um, so I called mom. I don't know if I texted her or called her on her cell or home first, but I know when I called home, it just went straight to voicemail, didn't ring. Um, I called 
other cell, no answer. I texted her um, a couple times and um, my wife came downstairs and uh, asked what happened because she saw I was upset and she typed in on the computer, um, fire on, uh, what was it? Fire on Green Court and into Google. And I kind of heard, I was standing on one side of the kitchen and she was over and I heard her just kind of gasp and I walked over and saw a picture of the house with only half the roof. And, uh, and she read about said there was one fatality and uh, one person in hospital or in, had, had made it to now. Um, and I just, uh, my, tried to get contact with my brother because he was up at their cottage. Um, He was driving down with his two kids and his wife and didn't know what to say and I was talking to my dad and at first when we didn't know I was like should I call the police to find out if, if it's their house and he's like his his friend Paul who I guess he was texting was by a police station or something was going to go in and I, he was like don't call yet we'll, we'll find out don't like and uh Explaining out there, my position here is obviously to interview you yes. because of some of the utterances that were made. Mm -hmm. um, now, as much I can tell you is that when Alan came out of the house, mm -hmm. he did say something rich or rich. Something yeah, like that's that, what right? they said in the other yeah. other room. And so that's why I had to caution you. I just yeah. wanted. Just, no, I I, okay. I understand. I I don't know if. And so we treat everything. Yeah. At the utmost. Yeah. Well, he's he's a witness at that time to right. whatever happened. Yeah. So I'm glad that you know. No, I I, I I just want to okay. make sure that this. Um. Tell me about um, like before we get into all of that. I don't want to. Um, yeah. Let's just talk about your mom. Okay. Okay. Tell me about your relationship with your mom. It was great. My kids were supposed to be sleeping over there this weekend. They'd spent the last two two days, like, she took them for swims in the pool. Like, she was, she was, it is, like, she She'd drop her anything to get my kids. Like if I had to stay, I'd teach at Hestry School, oh. and like a staff meeting, or if my brother and I went to Raptors, like she'd drop anything for those kids. Like and how old are your kids? Eight and four. Boy, girl. My daughter's eight, and my son's four. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't understand, but my daughter, she was. I have an eight-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. So, I, 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 so she had your kids. She had them. She had them Friday for a, a play date, uh, like a swim date, and mm -hmm. they went to the splash pad in the in the park. Like she made them quilts. She she was awesome. Like my brother and I always joke that she just always would. She was never wrong in her her thinking, but we'd always think she was, but, and then, I don't know, like, she was, till the last time you saw your mom was when? It was Saturday, is it Saturday, what's, the, I don't even know, what's today, Monday? Monday, yeah. So Saturday night, they were at our house, um, Al came, to, to meet her because um, 
Saturday I dropped her off. I dropped my kids off. They were gonna have another play date because my in-laws had uh, we we're supposed to go on vacation on Wednesday. My in-laws had bought us a trip to Greece. They're my wife's Greek, so and so my mom wanted to spend some time with the kids and she. I, I got there and we had breakfast on Saturday and she wanted Al Bill's uh, model planes and he's won awards for them and he displays them in this, uh, this bad old wall unit that they have at the house and I wanted to surprise him with a new display so I do woodworking and stuff outside of teaching. She wanted me to build a display case for his planes. So we were going downstairs to uh, take some measurements to see what worked best and one of the dogs as I was going down tripped me as I was going downstairs and that's when I fell down her flight of stairs in the, the basement. And she was at the, at the bottom and I kind of fell under her at the end and she said she, did her, she didn't complain, she said her knee hurt, hurt but I couldn't really moved my leg so they, we went to the hospital and that's on Friday and Saturday sorry spent five hours at the hospital getting my leg checked out once again she dropped everything and looked up stayed with my kids and stuff and my wife came in stayed at the hospital with me and then she stayed for dinner and um, Al came out because uh, my car had been left at the at their house, so he drove. Like they do anything for me and my kids and my family. Like they, were, he, he was a nerdy guy, and we always joked about that between my brother and our friends. But he like he loved he loved my mom. Like my dad and my mom split up, and it was bad and it was hard. But like Al loved my mom and made her happy. So I don't. That's all that matters. We called them this well. Uh, we called them this morning. Um, I think Amelia was having was booked to have surgery this morning. Yeah. And uh, spoke to Corey, her yeah. husband, and told him kind of. And I guess that's that's how they found out. I didn't have. Uh, we got a. We're just on Instagram together and stuff like that. So my wife looked up on Instagram, direct messaged her, and. Okay. Um, yeah, they're like. They're quite a bit younger than my brother and I, so they kind of, like, we moved out of the house and they moved in and, like, so they... that everybody gets along. Yeah. Now, before we continue and I, I, I go further, um, I'm sure they told you when me interviewing you like this, you had the opportunity to speak to a lawyer. Yeah. Right? And you, you know that, right? Yes. You can if you want. Yeah. Do you uh, want to? I, I'm fine. Okay. Really. I just wanted to cover that off before, because yeah. um, I don't think I mentioned it earlier. So I, 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 they, they spoke about it in the okay, room. Okay, good. So, good. Yeah. Um, now, your mom, she sounds like my mom, um, always looking after my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and you're a teacher? Mm -hmm. And you teach here in Hamilton? Hess Street School. Okay. And that's, what do you teach? Uh, last year I taught grade two, three, and next year is phys ed and library. Oh. Uh, two things. Yeah. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I, I've been a phys ed teacher for the last six or seven years before, but I switched schools. I switched from Billy Green up on the Stony Creek okay. Mountain and came down to uh, Hesher. Oh, <coughs> well, I, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it, nothing broken. So. Did your mom get hurt? She when she when I landed on her she she says like she's got bad knees and she had just been explaining that she's going for physio on her or massage on her back and she's been sore for a long time and uh, 
she she said it hurt her knee but she didn't um didn't uh, really complain like she just which said she was, was it? sorry which knee was it uh, I, I I couldn't I couldn't say no okay um so your relationship was great with your mom great with your kids does your brother have kids he has two twin girls the same age as Matthew my son Oh, wow. So that's probably great at family barbecues. Yeah, we don't, they live in Toronto, so we don't see them oh. as much as we'd like. But yeah, they're, my daughter likes playing with them more than my son because he's a little rougher. So, yeah. <laughs> so boys are. Yeah. Um, well, that's okay. Uh, so your dad and your mom, mm -hmm. what's their relationship like now? You said it was a pretty... It, uh, well, like when when they split up how old were you i was in was i grade 13 or grade 12 i was at, like, back when they had oac um i believe i was in oac because my brother was in grade nine so we were in high school together um they split up um my my dad's friend passed away and his wife and him started seeing each other. I guess it was I don't know, an affair or something or whatever. It was it was it was hard, um, but in the end, they got married and are happy. And my mom and Al found each other. They worked together at the at Mac. Um, and uh, what did your mom do at Mac? She was a lab tech, so blood and urine analysis. Okay. Yeah. And, and what worked, did Al do at Mac? He was the same. They were they same? worked together. Oh, yeah, he okay. was. Uh, he's a couple years younger, but um, my mom, I think, started at uh, the general, or I think it was the general, and then moved to Mac when we moved to to Dundas when we were when I was three or four. So, yeah. And that's nice. Yeah, yeah I, I I enjoyed growing up there. It was it was a nice place to live. So, um, the last time you saw your mom was this Saturday when she had your kids? Uh, she at our house, yeah. They left about probably seven or eight. Oh, so they came to your house, they were, yeah. Because um, she was like, I'll take you to the hospital, but let's we'll take you to the Oakville hospital. We live in Oakville. Um, Is that where the accident happened, at your house? No, it happened at her house. Her house. I was dropping off the kids. Oh, okay. And yeah. we went downstairs to take the measurements of some different places she said oh maybe over top of the bar he has a room with all his computers because he loved computers he fixed our computers all the time and he spends a lot of time in that room so she was like maybe we'll do it in there and um that's when i fell and we went to oakville trafalgar um on saturday and she just drove the kids back to my place and waited for us to need picking up again so okay um What's your brother's relationship like with your mom? It, there, theirs is a little different. My mom would say it, it's good as far as you know. Um, they they don't see eye to eye on on some things like my mom's health and stuff. So um, even the other day um, on the, the Friday when I was there, um, she had said about her her back and all this stuff. And when I got home, I'd texted that I saw mom, and uh, she you know she's complaining about back off massage, and he got angry, and she's like, because she doesn't talk to him. He's a chiropractor, so she doesn't. I don't think she wants to talk to him because he kind of talks down to her about it a bit. But he wants the best for her. But um, and then on the Saturday when I first got there, we were sitting down having breakfast. She's like, "Well, your brother sent me a snarky email about my back, and the and." So they had a, just on that level of, I think her health is, yeah. you know, he, she, she when, uh, when his kids were young and she would go into, take the go into Toronto to babysit her, his young ones for two day, two of the five days. So like she would do anything. Like I could call her at school at three o'clock and say, can you drive out and pick up the kids from the Y and she's like yeah 
unless she had a quilting thing. That's the only thing that she probably <laughs> didn't love more than the kids, but she, wow. she had a quilting club. So, last night, yes. when this happened, where were you? I was at home, um, sleeping uh, with my son. Um, he came down. I couldn't sleep too much. At about 2 o'clock, I put Netflix on and was watching Sicario, which is... Uh, then my son came down, I had to turn it off because it's a pretty violent movie. Um, and he just, he was upset, and he came down and laid with me for about... I don't know, 30 minutes or so, maybe around there. Um, when he fell asleep, I took him back upstairs slowly and uh, went back down. I just wasn't sleeping in, with my wife because my knee, so I was laying on the uh, the floor downstairs. But. Okay. Does he usually get up when he's upset like that? Uh, yeah, he usually come, like, almost every other night he'll come up. He, he, he won't put his sheet back like his cover back on so it come to us every night can he put my covers back on me can he put it in so or he's he still isn't uh toilet trained when he sleeps so he'll wet his bed half the time or something so it's we're up and down all the time so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wish my my daughter was toilet trained by three wow but Good boys, for her. boys are different. So. And girls don't like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> he'll sit in it the whole night and just be like, <laughs> I'm like, oh. Okay. So you were at home, and today, obviously, you were at the news. What time was it when you were dead? I, it was around 8 o'clock when my, I could check my phone when he called, but mm -hmm. um, I thought it was weird because I had my phone in the living room and I heard it ring. I was making breakfast and coffee for myself and my kids and uh, I ran Matthew actually brought me the phone and was ringing and I saw it said dad on it so I've, my dad doesn't call that often like we've like we have probably the same type of relationship that my brother and my mom have yeah. my mom would always say I'm more like her and Chris is more like my dad so um, it's like every family there's always one so What's your relationship like with your dad? Like, kind of. It, it's it's gotten better. I think I had a lot of anger back when I was in high school. Like, um, when they first, it was my mom. He was like, he hurt my mom, right? And she took it. She took it rough, and she stayed and raised us. And he he left, right? Like he he was still there, but. She didn't. She stayed and raised us and gave us everything. Like when I went to teacher's college, she bought me a car so I could drive to Buffalo back and forth, right? Like it was a piece of junk K car, but it got me back and forth to Buffalo and the day. K -car. Yeah, back the before. Days. No, that was after K cars were even popular. I it had was. K -car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, your mom raised you guys. Did you guys visit back and forth with your dad or no? Was it your mom? Did, like, after they separated? Like, did they split right when it happened? Or did your mom stick around and raise you guys? Uh, I, I'm, when I, I remember them telling us, I, we bought, my brother and I bought them a, uh, a gift certificate to Shakespeare's for their anniversary and later we found out that's where they finalized their basically their divorce on our gift that we bought them for their anniversary oh, no. <laughs> so it, but I, I I remember my dad they, they split up when we were younger I remember playing t-ball my dad moved out for about a year um, but I was probably like my daughter's age at that time. I just, I knew that we had to go visit dad in his apartment and stuff like that. Um, but when they split up this time, he, I think, I can't even remember totally, but I think he moved in with Kathy, who's his wife, basically right away. And she was, what, what hurt my mom was that 
Kathy was one of her friends. Um, now, she was also the wife of one of my dad's friends who um, died of cancer. So he, uh, I don't know, there's, there's always been, I think, to me, like, I felt like anger sometimes to, to my dad, but it's hard to tell him that, like, you, you hurt, hurt me like that. And my mom was just strong. Like, I can remember when they split up and talking, like, crying on the couch and she'd just come down and hold me and cry with me. And like, obviously if she was upset too, but she just wanted to, you your, was your brother with you too? Like yeah, he's, so he's he's five years younger. <coughs> um, and then we both we both went to McMaster, um, played baseball there, and like I lived at home there, and you know, my mom let me live there for free, right? And it was. When's the last time you think your dad talked to your mom? It would have been at my, um, as far as I know, like they, they see each other at Christmases and birthdays. So um, my brother had the twins birthday in, their birthday's June 20th. So it would have been around that, whatever that weekend was there. Um, my dad came, his wife didn't. Um, my mom came out, didn't, um, it was always tense when they were together. I think it, it was better when, I don't know, like, I sit there sometimes, my brother would, I don't know, like, it's been 20 years, like, you're happy, you're happy, just get over it, but not going through what she did and, um, I don't know, like, uh, it was always awkward. You could feel the tension, um, especially when Kathy was there, who's my dad's, right? Like, she basically, they, Are they still they're, they're still married, yeah. Um, basically, they'd be in, like, one corner, and, my, yeah. you know, and even, like, I got, I got mad at my mom the other, like, after we had a, I think it must have been my kid's birthday. We had them together this year and they had a dance party theme. And um, we, we had a, like a dance party in the basement. And my dad and Kathy were down there and people were taking pictures and stuff. And my mom and Al stayed upstairs because they didn't want to be down there. And I remember dropping the kids off and, like a couple days later, my mom just crying at me, crying at me. And she's like, like, she was so angry that my wife put pictures on Facebook and there weren't any of her dancing with the kids. Uh. And it was like, it was just like, like in my head, I'm like, it's so petty in a way, but I'm like, it's Facebook, I don't even have Facebook. So I was like, mm -hmm. but to her, like she does so much for them and my dad just kind of swoops in and that's what she's like, he just swoops in and takes all the glory and um, mm -hmm. Just, I tried to say like it wasn't intentional. Like the pictures were the kids. Yeah. He's in the background, and yeah. it's just, just like stupid things like that. You wish. Yeah, it still hurts. <laughs> still bothered her. Sorry. Still bothered her. Oh, it it, it did, and I you know I did. But you're right, you don't think of things like that. You think of the pictures of the kids. Exactly. Like, there was 20 pictures on Facebook, and my dad was in, like, 15 of them. But I used the in the background, and right. the kids are dancing. And I just said, well, you didn't go downstairs. With, like, they're not taking yeah. pictures of the adults and putting them on. But I just... Mm -hmm. I'm so stupid now. Some water. I'm okay. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, we drank so much water today, and before we came, we did like a juice bar thing. And Do you want pop? I'm good, thank you. No, I don't. Sure? Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so, the relationship with um, Al, yeah. 
How was your relationship with him? Good. Like he. Did you call him Al or Alan? What did you call him? <sighs> To, we, we all had a nickname uh, we called him BGA it was it, all our friends and stuff like that because he was kind of a really nerdy guy and, and <laughs> stuff like that like his real name was Lloyd but he went by Al so yeah. it's just I called him Al like not Alan he, he would introduce himself as Alan but it was always he was Al like and he would like the one thing like the, 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 like I think my wife and I both loved about him is that he, he loved our kids like they were his own grandkids, right? Oh, yeah, it's hard to find. It, it, my dad's wife doesn't, and he would take my son to the airplane museum and see train shows. Like he, he doesn't have any grandkids of his from his um, daughters yet, uh, and. That's yeah, what they said. Barely. Mm -hmm. I read the read on the page. Well, in the article that my wife read to me, I was in, said that he it said that he was found on the grass or something. So I, I, that's what the article said. But he made some utterances mm -hmm. about Rick or Rich. Mm -hmm. and so um, that's why I was trying to get what your relationship was yeah. like. I wonder where he would get that. For, uh, do you know any other Rick or Riches? I, I don't like know any more. Like he referring to? I, like the, uh, the detective in there said, he goes, could, like, maybe he was trying to get them to call me. But even like this morning, I said, I don't know anybody on that street other than we have a, a friend from baseball growing up. Um, Joey Costigan, and I tried to call him this morning because he lives on the end of the street to say, like, when we didn't know yet. Um, but I, he he did a lot of, like, modeling. He did, not modeling, um, making models, sorry. Um, he, they were members of the Yacht Club. I, don't, I honestly don't know their friend pool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know a few of them, Janet and uh, uh, Janet and think of their names now. What was the relationship like between Al and your dad? <laughs> to me it was like non-existent like I, I, I when they were together like I said they didn't socialize I, I like at parties like it might be a hello or something like that but there wasn't there was no, they didn't fight. Like there was no ever screaming matches that I that I saw. And now it's in front of all the family and stuff. But um, as far as I know, that Alan, my dad, didn't get along. But they didn't like you know what I mean. Like it wasn't get along. But it just the only time they saw each other, that as far as I know, was Christmas time and kids' birthdays. And they were civil with each other? Oh, yeah, they just sit on one side of the room and, you know, or Did one room. Did they ever chat? Have you ever seen them have, like, a beer together? No. No, no. I've never. Not like that, just kind of in the same the room? But same room, and but kind of maybe oblivious to each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there any reason for, like, where does your dad live? He, uh... Like where was he when he was in his at his cottage in Midland, I believe. Like, oh, okay. Um, they have a house in Brantford. Okay. Does he ever go there for any reason to, to join us? To um, he has. I, uh, he has like his friend Paul McCartney. I don't know if they're close anymore. Um, he's the guy who texted my dad this morning to okay. to tell me to to tell him, and my dad called from there. Um, I, I I don't think my dad has anything in 
done this anymore. Like they spend the majority of their time up at the cottage and shuttled back to Brantford. They're trying to sell their house in Brantford now, so. Do you know anyone who um, would want to do something like this? No, I. Did, was there any enemies that Al had or your dad had? I, my dad had? Or sorry, oh, Al oh, had my. or your mom, mom? had? Uh, like that's what I've been thinking about all morning. Like there's, I, I can't think of anyone, but they, like, Al makes models, my mom makes quilts. Like she, yeah. you know, they, they said that on Friday when we came over, when I came over to drop it off, she, my mom said, did you leave a crowbar in our backyard? And I said, no, I don't. I have one crowbar and it's in my garage. She's like, oh, because Al found a crowbar in the backyard. And I'm like, I thought, um, I didn't think much of it. And uh, he, when he, he came back, he was like, oh, did you leave a crowbar? I'm like, well, why don't I bring a crowbar when I'm dropping my kids off with you? And uh, he brought it out and showed me. It was like a big, probably as long as this, big blue octagonal crowbar that he had in between the gate and um, they had a wheelbarrow. Okay. And that, that's the only and weird- And when was that found? That was Friday morning. And okay. when she came over to our house, um, I, I, I kind of joked, uh, when she came over to my house, she was telling my wife about it. And then I kind of joked to my brother, like, oh, they're getting old. They can't remember where they're leaving their their stuff yeah. sort of thing so as I understand like explain the house to me so the way the house is yeah. there's a pool in the backyard pool if you look at the house the pool is mm -hmm. in the back right okay yeah. and Divide. how do you gain access to the backyard how do you so there's a there's only one all through the house you can go through the sliding glass door or down a half flight of stairs there's a there's a back door Okay. Um, and then there's a, a gate on the, the left side of the house between the garage, beside the garage, not between it. Okay, which side of the, is the gate on? Which side of the house? It, it's the far left if you're looking far at left. it. Okay. Yeah. And does that gate have a lock on it? It's not, I don't think it has a lock. I think it's like chained, like a chain link sort of thing that oh, wraps okay. around it. Yep. That's how we let the, when the dogs go for a walk. It, I think they used to have one of the clicker Absolutely. things, but the dogs would jump on the gate. And okay, and is there any way anybody can get into the backyard from the graveyard? I understand they back into a graveyard. They back onto a graveyard, yeah. So is there any way anybody can get into their backyard from the graveyard? There's, I guess you could hop the fence. Um, I, think, I think we fixed it. There used to be... Um, on the far end of the pool, it used to be uh, like uh, like a dip in the in the ground. Oh, that somebody can you get. I, I think it was more from animals and stuff like okay. that. Like, but but a person couldn't fit under there. I honestly haven't looked at it in years. Okay. So. Um, and it's a chain link fence, I take it. The one the, in the back into the yeah area. yeah by the city, right? Like the it's yeah, it's I assume it's by there, and there's. On their backyards split into two, um, so there's the pool side, and then it's kind of like the dog side. Okay. And the dog side doesn't have any grass, or uh, it's got a tiered, like a, a retaining wall, sort of. And it used to have cedar trees, but now it's just a, like a privacy fence. And on the pool side, there's a uh, overgrown cedar hedge. Okay. Now. Has there been any problems like with people hanging out in the graveyard or anything Honestly, like that? Have uh, they, has your mom ever said anything to you? Like? Not that I can recall. Like the uh, what she said about the crowbar, I was kind of like, that's weird. Why would someone leave a crowbar in your backyard? Like that just, mm -hmm. and she said, oh, maybe someone hopped the fence and came through or something. I'm like, well, that's, that doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Um, 
I, I know when we were growing up, there's, there'd always be like, you hear people in the back, but honestly, like I haven't been there for, I haven't stayed there for 20 years, so I don't know. But the last time you'd been to their house to drop off the kids was when? So it was Saturday when uh, the, I fell down the stairs, yeah. And then which day was it when they were at your house? When they came back. Was it still the same it was Saturday? Yeah, because okay. she took me to the hospital. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So then investigations like this, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm going to take it anyways. But um, your phone. Yeah. Just um, pertaining to this case. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you. Mm -hmm. You say you were at home with your yeah. son. Like, why would you make that up? Yeah. Um, but we want to track to see where you were. Yeah. And, or your conversation. So um, I would take it. Yeah. If you want, you can sign a consent. It shows you're fully cooperative. And uh, yeah. I'll download the contents and um, we'll. Uh, are you fine without your phone for till tomorrow? Oh, I've been talking to, <laughs> it's like my main way. Of, I know, yeah. communicating because of your mom. Um, we would take it, download it, and give it back to you. I have to, but I, we're going to have so much stuff to, to do. Like I, I know, I know. Okay, I'm going to talk to my bosses and say that you're willing to give your phone Yeah, over. you can, like, if, but, if um, you can do it now, like, I just... Uh, let's see if somebody, I don't know if somebody's still... Email. Let me just check. Okay. Okay. Are you sure I, I can't get you anything? I'm fine. No. Okay. I, <laughs> what kind of phone is that? An iPhone? What? A uh, six S. Not new, not very new. Okay. I'm bringing you water, anyways, because I'm bringing myself water. Um. So we have a tech crime unit mm -hmm. that downloads phones. Of course, they're going home already by like four, but we're gonna call them back in. Mm -hmm. So we can get your phone to them and give it back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's important just to cover all our bases. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And, um, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm Do you need meds or something for your... I took some Advil before we came, so... Not that I'm, like, <laughs> supplying them, but I don't no. know if I'm... If I'm I, past, like, a, a dosage, no. you sound like you're... No, no, pain. it's... It's it's sore. It's, you know, it's... That's all. It's, it, yeah, I'm, It's always sore, so it's not a big deal, but... I'm not going to say your address on video, because we never do. Okay. Tell me if this is right. Looking right. Yeah? Yep.
So, one, two, three, four, five, six. It, I think there's six of them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just as I just hit it as many times as I can, basically. I'm going to do that. Probably not the best code, but. I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is you. Mm -hmm. Coming over here so I can show you. It's okay, don't move. That's you at your address. Mm -hmm. You do authorize me, but it's not going to be just me. It's just me. I'm going to take it yeah. and give it to them. Yeah. Um, of me or any other officers deemed necessary to enter and search a black iPhone 6S, and there's your password. Yeah. Um, located here at 155 King William Street and its contents which are controlled by me and sees any items which are believed on reasonable grounds to be relevant to this investigation or evidence of any offense to be or to be contraband. I fully understand that any item seized as a result of this consent search may be used as evidence against me or against any other person or persons for the purpose of criminal or statutory charges and in court procedures. I have been advised and understand that I have the right to re right to consult counsel without delay and that I may telephone any lawyer I wish. I further have been advised that I have the right to free advice from a legal aid lawyer that if I am charged with an offense, I may apply to the unlegal, Ontario Legal Aid Plan for legal assistance. No promise, threat, or inducement of any kind was held out to me by members of the Hamilton Police Service or any other person in authority in order to gain this consent. This consent was not obtained by direct or indirect coercion, coercion, duress, intimidation, or manipulation. I have been informed and fully understand that I may refuse to consent to any search and that I may revoke my consent to search at any time. Okay, let me get you this right here. And I will officially take your phone. Do you wanna like, like, do you wanna text them about that person back? Yeah, yeah, call, it's my wife. Tell her you're gonna have your phone, not have your phone for a couple hours. Couple hours? Yeah. I'll get it back to you. Yeah. So you don't have to get it driven back to you. Yeah. Okay. you to draw you're a teacher um, instead of explaining how the house is all set up I don't know where the bedrooms are where your mom's bedroom is how the can you draw it for me? yeah I don't know if you can draw this way or in this way because I'm trying to get a picture of where they were in relation to how this might have happened do you know what i mean and i want to know also if there's anything in the house that could be flammable like you said he builds um models models but there's you know like i can't see engines lying around or anything no not like not working model, like little plastic Toy models. Mo yeah. yeah so I have no, try to think of what could be in there, um, just so I know, because I I haven't been to the house, mm -hmm. other people have gone, I haven't gone, so the people that I talk to describe, like, I know kind of the court and the outside, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the inside looks like. 
Okay, so let's, I think it's pretty much a big, um, there's like a front door, mm -hmm. and a, like steps, uh, like a half wall, and then. Is it a two story, one story? Bungalow, I think, right? Like it's one story in that basement. Is there a step up to a back, you know, like a So this, back? this, you have to go up like four steps. Okay. Here. And then this should all be one wall, I think. Like, so that's like the living room. Okay. Yep. Um, and then there's a wall with a door. And this is like kitchen sliding glass door out to the deck and the pools Yeah. Well, not growing up, it was my room. And it's your room, now it's yeah, a sewing room? Quilting room and the basement, too. Um, and this was like Al's, he, he does a lot of marathons and stuff, so it was his like running room. But that was my brother's. He had work, like he has workout stuff in there? No, 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 just like clothes and shoes. And oh, oh. Room. That's like a spare bedroom, too, so my kids would sleep in there Okay. when they, they went over. And they had, uh, oh, it should be bigger. This is the bathroom. Like uh, my mom's library and their bedroom. Minister. And, um, how did it, oh, this is not very, this, this should come over to like there, kind of. And then this door goes downstairs. Okay. So this is the first floor. I'm gonna get you. And this is the, the garage. So the but garage you, is on the side of the house. Garage is attached. Yeah. So my bedroom, my mom and Al's bedroom would have butted against the the garage. Where's your windows? Window. I did they have one or two? I think it was a pretty big one. And then there's a window like here and. The here and a window here. Sliding glass. Mm. Maybe a window here in the kitchen. A big, like a... Uh, Pretty window. nice layout, I'd say. It's, it's nice it's, with the kitchen. It's, and the it's nice with, like, the mm -hmm. old... I think it was built in, like, the 70s, so it's a little compartmentalized, but they were thinking someday to maybe open up this wall. Yeah, and make nice. it into a... What is this? Is this the rest so, of the backyard? So, yeah, so... Um, there's like a, a big, there's a fence that goes along here and then like steps that go down. And then if you, you can't see it here, but there's a door here that goes into the basement. Okay. Um, and then this is the, the dog area. And big it area. actually goes, it actually goes on the other so side of, so that gate. That walkway is on after the garage. Yeah, so there's a walkway that goes all the way like that and down. And then the sculpted driveway. Okay. And so you and can the the, the gray fence, gray. the graveyard goes all the way there, and then there's a like, I'm trying to think. There's a little, I think, a fence here, like a, a little one, and their neighbor's fence goes like that. And so can you gain access from this side? I you probably could hog it, but there's like a like a. Hot, like the furnace, the, not the furnace. What the, the, uh, air conditioner. I think the air conditioner, but the um, heater for the pool. Oh. So there's a all the pool stuff yeah, yeah. here. Okay. So why would you on this side? Yeah, I, you you I, you probably could, but I don't. It's pretty narrow there. So this walkway coming from like so this is like the front. You can get there, there's like garden here. You can walk up here. This is the gate that's the gate, locked. Yeah. This is where the crowbar thing was. That's, yeah. And you can walk up here, and you can just go right back here. Yeah. 
Okay. Show me the basement. So this is the top. where the, the model furnace thing. furnaces um, and the um, my, my mom they've got some uh, racks with food and stuff along here and this is the computer room um, there's a fire fireplace like an old um, standalone mm -hmm. there and then a Bathroom and a like a bar. Can I sit out? Yeah, it's, it's very. There's two like big concrete pillars there. Um, and, like there's some seating here, but it's all one big room. That's nice. Um, Is there windows uh, in here? Like can you fit through a window there or no? Um, I've never tried to fit through that. We used to climb through my brother's window <laughs> when we lost our key uh, the, when we were growing up because the all these are raised up. Like you couldn't get into my window. But when we were growing up, we'd always go into my brother's because there was a, uh, a landing. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's two windows here, but this is covered by the deck oh okay, so you yeah. can't yeah. and then I, there's a window in the utility room i think it's there um but i don't i don't think you can use that because of the all the heater and Holy stuff like that. Yeah. i think they used to have like a shed there but i think they took it down is there can you get outside at all from downstairs um, a basement. You gotta go up these stairs. To go and oh, the there's a. It's like a cold cellar. Okay. Um. Yeah, because that's the garage. So there's no, and this is all under here. Yeah, that's one, two, three. There's four windows in the okay. basement. Yeah. So the only way in here. Upstairs is through the front door, or through this door, through the deck, and the rest are just windows, right? Uh, is there an entrance way from the garage into the house? No, there's a like there's a door into the garage, mm -hmm. um, and then the the retractable door. Okay. But I don't. It's not. I don't think they have an automatic garage door. Okay. I'm gonna get you to initial your artwork mm -hmm. so it's not. Can't say I did it. <laughs> you want to say you did it? Oh, trust me, it's better than that. <laughs> trust me on that one. Um, okay, now that I have the layout, that's good. That explains. Like, it's hard, right? Talking to people, and I'm trying to picture things. I know the outside of the court. Yeah. Wow, there's the house. Like they lived in. They lived well. Yeah, right at the, the very there. end. At the and very end, in the middle, and then. They've had so many neighbors. I know the um, Russ Powers used to live. If you're looking at the house to the right, he's a town councilman or something. Uh, he grew up with his son. But there's been a lot of turnover in the last five or ten years of, of neighbors. So my understanding is that they're the longest. Oh yeah, we're they've been on the street the longest. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. For we moved there when I was, I think, four. Wow. So thirty-eight. 38 years wow. basically so I take it their house is paid off I would assume so I yeah. don't think they've re got a mortgage I don't think they've redone it I think it was paid off when um, 
when my parents were still together, I think. Wow. My dad was uh, like a financial advisor to, or worked with uh, trusts and stuff like that. Is that, that what so. he does now? No, he's he's retired. Oh. They, uh, when they got uh, separated, his wife um, inherited a trucking company. Oh, okay. So they ran that together. I guess he kind of did the books and stuff like that. And then they sold that probably three or four years ago, I think. Uh -huh. And basically they just... You know what I didn't ask you? What your relationship and your brother... You know, do you have a sister? Or no sister. Your brother? Yeah. Um, just the two of you? Yeah. What's your relationship like with your dad's wife? It, it's... I think my brother's relationship is better. Um, it, it usually revolves around when we go up to see them at the cottage. So my dad wants us to come up and she has had some difficult times with my children. So when we go up, we, we don't want to drive up for the day. Like we're not driving three hours on the day. We go up for four or five days. And she'd kind of, after like one or two days, kind of be, is she having a hard time with your kids? It's just... Their kids. I know, but they, you, you, you get in your groove of things up at the cottage. You don't want to get up early. You don't want to do this. And kids are loud, and they're on their schedule. And They get up. <coughs> my son gets up at like 6. Yeah. Well, my son usually gets up about 5.30, so <laughs> lately. But, um, I thought mine went fine. So <laughs> I, my, my brother, his um, wife's family has a cottage close to them so they have the ability to drive there and say hey spend the day have a have a drink uh, or so and yeah. leave mm -hmm. where we you know if we're going to go up and spend some time let's spend some time but when it's you know when you feel like a burden after a couple of days you're like well like the last time we went up we went up for a day and a half we just drove up hey stayed for slept over and gone by lunch i feel like that and She's not like she's she at times is very nice to the kids and at times is kind of indifferent. She does her own clay work and um, um, like mosaics. <clears throat> my daughter's very into that, but my daughter wants to go in and play around with her where she wants to work, so it's you know, she's kind of a hindrance to her, which is it's it's unfortunate, but yeah. 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 <coughs> you know, I, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I have small ones, and I get it when you feel like people don't want to be around your kids. You just yeah, it's and your so kids are everything, especially at this age. They are, and you know they yep. they do love it up there, and it's tough when you know packing them up. And they're like, why are we leaving? Yeah. It's like, well, I you don't you. you don't see the adult stuff, but it's and it's unfortunate because my dad loves the kids, and it's but it's just a strange dynamic sometimes, but. So if you were up there with your mom and Al, the, like they, if, would they never go to the cottage? But <laughs> let's say they did. Oh, up to my dad's cottage? The, no, or just had their own cottage? Had a cottage? How would it be? It would be awesome. Like, uh, it it wouldn't be as nice probably because my dad has a lot of money now and a huge cottage and all the bells and whistles. But it would be better because you know you you feel like everybody want you there yeah and oh I got it um <coughs> what does your wife do she works at Ryerson University um, so she's into um, I guess she's programs coordinator they call it like so any um, uh, fitness uh, training all the, the group fitness and personal not group fitness and personal group fitness and instructional programs so she hires and organizes all the different classes that go on for the university. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And your brother's a chiropractor? chiropractor and his wife's a teacher. Yeah. Okay. Do the teachers get along? You get along with his wife? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Talia's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was wondering, teacher and teacher. Uh, so you either love people you work with as a teacher <laughs> or you can't, can't stand them. But, yeah. Uh, my boss's parents are both teachers, and he's, he can't wait to leave the house sometimes. He's just oh, like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Uh, <laughs> teachers can be, it's a, I've said to people, you either love teacher friends or 
and that's why I say to kids all the time when they don't get along. I'm like, we don't get along with every teacher that works here, you know, but yeah. I don't go to my way to make trouble with them. It's just, you know, we work together and that's how it is. That's how it is, right? Yeah. So, yeah. same in a class, but. Well, um, I think I covered off um, pretty much all I had to ask you. Um, I have to ask you uh, the question, I have to ask you flat out. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything to do with what happened no. last night? Okay. Um, do you know anyone that would have right. harm to your... You've, we were all racking our brain today. Like, the only thing, like, when my when we were saying coming in and interviewing, my wife was like, well, mention the crowbar thing, but uh, even that, I was just like, I honestly thought, you know, my mom tells the same stories over and over and over again as she's getting a little older. She's yeah. very smart, but, and that was one of the jokes we always had, I just thought that, the parents the same thing. I just thought maybe they'd forgotten something, but they were pretty adamant that someone had left a, a crowbar at the side of the, the house, and I... Did some, does somebody have keys besides, do you have keys to the house? Yeah. Does somebody else have keys? To the house? I, their neighbor, I think, when we were over there, when she took me to the, the hospital, her, her neighbor to the left. I know they did. Um, we used to just leave the key in the mailbox all the time. <laughs> like, I, I, we'd come home and my friends would be in the house downstairs watching TV when we were, we were home, right? Um, okay. But yeah. My brother probably has a key, I would assume. Like, we, my mom would give us a key to come over and swim if they weren't there, right? Like, if yeah. it's just like, she was, it was our house yeah. to, to, to her. Yeah. Hmm. Have, have you seen anybody on that street or around that area that doesn't I'm, belong there? We're honestly, like, if, if I'm there, we're in the backyard. Um, is there any issues in, in behind in the graveyard? People coming through there? That, I think there's always been, like, I remember as a kid cutting through the graveyard because it, you cut through the graveyard to get to the park. Is that a big grave? Like, I don't, I don't. I, I, as far as graveyards go, it's. I don't know how big. Like, I don't know the street. Yeah, it's. It's a decent size. Like. Is it fairly big? Like, if you were to look out. Oh, if you look at it, it's just black. There's no lights or anything. So at nighttime, you couldn't see anything. We'd always hear stuff growing up in, like, hooting and hollering. And uh, police used to patrol it sometimes, like, just do a drive around because there's a couple loops and stuff like that. But okay. honestly, I haven't been there for at nighttime to to see anything. Like, I wouldn't, wouldn't know if anything goes on in the corridor. How do you get into that graveyard from which street? Uh... York so you can there's there's probably a couple of different ways like you can um, so green so behind what the house is the graveyard and if you basically just go straight down to the left um, there's the gated entrance and that, so you can drive in you can walk in um, at the top because it's all tiered up um, at the top, there's a, uh, it, there was um, a way to walk into the, the driving park, which is behind the, so basically. So Dundas Driving Park. Yeah. My grandparents are buried there, I think. It's a big but graveyard. It, yeah. It's, pr I, I've been to ones in Toronto because my wife's Greek and there's huge, like it's oh, yeah. massive sprawling thing. So it's not small like we used to toboggan there in the winter because they had these slope tilt it's as bad as it is now you think back but that's what everybody did right like in tobogganing in between the graves so um, yeah, I mean, and there was weird. also there used to be a, a works like a, a city or a town works building and they had works trucks I'm that were kind waiting. of attached to the I'll tell you the reason why I'm asking is um, if there's entrance way in, entrance ways in. I want to know if there's businesses around, cameras around. I do you know what I mean? If there's anybody exiting or entering the graveyard at that time or on your street, I'm curious as to know if there's anybody that, any people, and we do our own canvas, so I'm sure yeah. we've already covered it. Yeah. 
split um, to check and see who has That's cameras. what Chris, my brother, said. He's like, did Mama now have a camera or anything? I said, I, I think they had, did they have any floodlights? I think they had a, like, um, a motion a, sensor. Uh, I think that I think they had it at the, the front of the house, whether it worked or not, I don't know. Um, okay. They used to have one at the back, too. Um, but I think they stopped it because the dogs would always set it, set it off. Okay. Um, as far as bu- there's there's no businesses around there, you've got to go quite a bit into town or up the other way um, to, um, there's like a, a strip mall. Hmm. But yeah, there's no businesses around there. It's pretty um, just residential. Okay. Unless I haven't been in the driving park in years, so I don't know. Yeah, me neither. Is there any um, indication of any kind of mental illness in the family? Not in, well, not my mom. Um, I know um, when my mom, um, when Al first moved in, he didn't scare me like I was an adult. He didn't. He, he had uh, he had some anger issues. A little like, and I don't know if he took medication. My mom just said, "Oh, he's um, he gets a little depressed sort of thing." But I don't know if that was from his uh, his separation and stuff like that. But um, I, I I don't know. Like I, I she never mentioned it after like because he's we lived there when they when they were still there together so me and actually jeremy who's in the um uh, the waiting area he, we were down there playing rba baseball on the computer room one day and he just came in and he was f f f what not like this and then we were just kind of like that and then he stormed out and my mom was like oh it's okay he's just you know he's a little angry about something today and that was the last i heard about it so i she you know, I, I didn't ever ask her to, like, I don't think he'd ever try yeah. to do something to her, like, because I never saw that, so. Okay. And that was when I still lived there, so that was, like, you know, like 17, some 17, 20 years ago that that happens, or, or however long, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think, I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. I'm going to go ask Ben, the guy you met out, the lead oh, investigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go check with him and see if there's anything that he wishes for me to cover off. And okay. uh, I think pretty much um, I wanted to get the family dynamic. And, uh, I think every family's a little messed up. Oh, everybody has. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. My wife always complains. Her family's very, they're Greek and they're very close. Our family wasn't as close, but it's not that we didn't love each other. We we weren't raised, and she was raised like family, 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 family. So like, there's not a day that goes by that she doesn't talk to everyone in her family. Whereas <laughs> ours, like, I could just you know not talk to my brother for a month and just see him and be like, hey, it's like a little like grunt you sort of just thing. Saw me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. <laughs> she had a hard time, doing it, but you know the more you see. So when you teach, you see a lot of family. You're just like, well, they're they're messed up. Yeah, we're all messed up. Yeah, in, in some a bit. Yeah, there's no family that's perfect. That's for sure. No, and, uh, none. But, I don't uh, care what anybody says. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go check with Ben. Yep. Before I um, get you go here and uh, I'd hate to do that. And he says, "Oh, Michelle, did you oh. this?" Yeah. No. So let me double whatever, check. Whatever you have to do. Head in the door. Give me a second. Okay, can I get you anything? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm... Okay. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you think is important that I should know? Uh, I think... I think everything was said. I don't know, like... All day we've just been... I know, had an argument with my wife because she was she was doing the layout of the house and I was like no that's not how it is like I mm-hmm. lived there. and she was thinking that maybe it was the furnace or something like that. and I was like no that oh yeah that would get me back to my other question was there anything that might have caught fire the, uh, like the only thing that would be 
flammable, I would assume, is like Al had anything that he built his models with. I don't know if he like, you got to do something like, like yeah. Like that's the not, they did got stuff in the garage. I would assume, like they cut the grass and stuff like. Okay. But that's the only thing I can think of. Like he's got his. I assume he has something that's flammable in the at, uh, work area, but mm -hmm. and there's probably gas in the for the lawnmower. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's five thirty-six. I'm gonna end this interview. I'm gonna okay. walk you back out. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna make you. Oh. Troy Ashbaugh. Sorry to meet you under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things I want to make sure you understand. Everything in here is going to be audio and video recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got that jacket on. I understand you're cold mm -hmm. in the other room. Actually, yeah. uh, it's warm in here. At any time, if you feel you want to take that jacket off, uh, feel free. Mm -hmm. Water, pop there for your consumption. Um, what I want to do is I want to make sure of a few things before we start talking about uh, what's happened since uh, the police became involved with you earlier today. But the one thing I do want to make sure is that if you need to use the washroom, if you need a break, if you have any concerns that you need addressed, just ask me and I will certainly look after them. Mm -hmm. I put my name on the board there. I have a tendency of meeting people and especially in situations like this having trouble remembering their name right off the, the bat. So uh, I'm comfortable with Troy. What are you comfortable with being called? Rich. Rich? Okay. This is a camera in this house. Oh. And this is a three-part video. What we just watched was one where we see this person walking toward and what the investigators clearly feel is walking toward okay. your old house. So then, if you watch number two, Why don't you do, you can see the person coming into the frame. Now, again, one of my big concerns is always tunnel vision and just looking for what I'm looking for. What would you describe happening in, in that video? Well, there's some sort of flash of light coming out, but there's a person walking and they went back and forth, and there was some sort of flash of light. And what what do you think the flash of light was? I, I don't know. It could have been something on fire. I thought I didn't know what it was at first when I saw the first one, but yeah. Let's watch it again. And so, describe to me what happens as it takes place. We'll see him come through into frame here. So, tell me what you see there. See a person walking. Right. And describe as as you see things that you find catch your attention. Look like a flash on them. Yep. So I don't know. I, when that happened, I thought it was maybe a cell phone or something like a. Yep. Like a light. I get that too. I'd never thought of that. Now, what do you see that as? It looked like some sort of. Looks like two things of light, I don't know, and it flashes, so it looks like it might be some sort of fire, I don't know, like it could be or like a firecracker or something, I don't know. And then, then he walks back. Okay, so those are, the, and, and, and again, the, that's a perspective that I didn't see either time, late at night, uh, kids in the area, possible. I didn't see that, but I, I'll tell you what I saw, but I, I can see, especially the first flash of light, that cell phone, that never even dawned on me, because the first flash of light is fairly... It's in the body of the person. Yeah. So the first time I saw that video, and this is at 
um, a.m. on the 9th of July 2018. Right there, do you see it? Mm -hmm. So the first time I saw it was a flash too, and I never thought of a cell phone, but watch it again. You see how it sort of drops? Mm -hmm. So I never thought of a cell phone, but now I thought about the cell phone, but it distinctly looks like it drops to me. And then when it, that's at the 22 second mark of the video. And then as it continues on, we lose sight of the guy or the person behind the tree. Do you think that looks like a, a firecracker there? It looks like something's lit up. I don't know if it's a firecracker or what. Yeah. So since since you hurt your knee, yeah. you slept on uh, the floor. Uh, one day, assist your bad back in two. Well, no, it wasn't just this way. I said in previous times I've slept on the floor. In the oh, I'm sorry. Living room for my back. But, but this was to make sure that your wife didn't <laughs> bump into your. So you slept. It's just easier than sitting. I find being on a bed with the compression, so like it just flat surface, nothing. Um, do you remember using your phone or Googling anything specific uh, that night? I don't remember. I remember using my iPad to watch, started watching a movie and then my son came down, so... Do you recall... Um, well, put it this way, your, your iPad, mm -hmm. what... Well, I guess it would record what time the movie was watched. Would that be accurate? It's Netflix, I guess. If it maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a. A tablet. I, so yeah. I, I, maybe I guess, but I don't. Do you, have, do you know what time you started watching that? It's probably in the neighborhood of two o'clock or so, something like that. At two o'clock in I, the. I believe around two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, how long did you watch that for? Not too long, because my son came downstairs, and uh, he crawled beside me, and he had a bad dream, and we were just cuddling there for a little bit, and basically just shoved the, the iPad under the couch kind of thing, and um, it was on the floor, and I just pushed it under. Um, he laid with me for, I don't, I don't even know how long, and then took him up to bed, and uh, once he was back in bed, I just went back down and fell asleep. Do you know what time you put him back in his bed? Not even, no. It was probably maybe in between 2.30 and 3, somewhere in there. I, I don't know how long he was down there for. So he was driving, and... Um, the other officer was in the female officer was in the back and they said they wanted to talk to my wife because they were worried that we were leaving for Greece and I was like we're not going to we've cancelled the trip and they thought that was odd and they're like why would you cancel the trip I'm like why, why wouldn't like doesn't that seem odd that I wouldn't cancel the trip and she kept pushing that in the interrogation like that's that's odd that you'd cancel the trip and I was like, whatever you're trying to get me to do say something or whatever but I, I thought it was odd that if I said oh we're still going that that would be odd to me um so they were in the car they they said they were coming over to interview my wife they were going to interview her in the house and then they decided not to they took her in a car and were gone for about an hour we had basically everybody over my brother Amelia Alice and their families everybody came over and my wife came in the was hysterical, like sobbing uncontrollably, and just went up. So she's like, "You have to go talk to them." So I went outside there, waiting in the car, and I said, "Well, we're going to take this, and we want you to know that this is what Al said, and he said that Rich did it, and not to call him because he already knows." And uh, I was just like. Ugh. And later on, they had told Vange to go in and tell me, tell me that that's what they said. And she's like, I'm not telling them, that will kill him. Like, yeah, how can you? And they said, okay, if you're not going to send him out. 
And that's when I said, do you want to talk to my son? Like, he, he, uh, he, no, no, we don't want to upset anyone. And I, that's when I swore. I said, you did a real fucking good job of not upsetting anyone. My wife's inside a mess, and now you're telling me that Hal said I killed them. Um, and I just said, well, am I under arrest? Like, if this is what he said, you have him saying this. You're like, no, 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 you can go back. Um, I, I didn't even know. I, I couldn't even process that. So, and then they drove off. And that's the last I'd heard of that. And, you know, and then everyone in the house knew about it. And, you know, it was obviously awkward, but... And the, the girl seemed like, you know, he didn't do it. Like, it doesn't... Leave. And I said, you know, it's I just... It, that day was... I still remember my wife just coming in and just being... Like, she was unconsolable, right? Like, and... But that's where... That's when I'd first heard that... And I questioned, I said, but you said you didn't know, and you couldn't tell. And they're like, well, we don't have to tell you everything. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, you, you don't. And so that was, I, I was just confused because it was, and the, the day before it was, well, Rich or Rick, he could, couldn't really understand because he didn't, he wasn't speaking exactly coherently. And, uh, then the next day, it's no, it was, it was you. He said you, and this and that. So I, that was a, a, a shock. But that was uh, that was the first time, and it was it was Officer McNaughton that told me, and the other officer was in the back taping the the conversation. So these are uh, text messages uh, from her phone, uh, primarily to you, from. Uh, the 9th of January 2017 up into just uh, I think January 2018 so mm -hmm. all the text messages between the, the two of you um, I mean I can go and look at these dates and I can I, I can show you the uh, the information but um, 01 09 2017 I can't handle this situation without my cards and that's her saying She's got no bank cards. She's yeah, got no she, credit cards. Yeah, and I've explained about her depression and stuff. It's it's not just that, but yes, that's part of it. Yeah. And she had no bank card, and she had no credit card. Mm hmm And I gave her cash all the time. Yeah. I understand why the the credit card was cashed or uh, canceled. Why was the bank card canceled? She just needed a new one. She just had an old bank card. Why didn't you go and get her a new bank card? I just didn't. Because there wasn't enough money if she went well, to there's, the... there's money there. Well, I would suggest you didn't get her a bank card because if she had a bank card to go and get she money from could, the account... She could have gone and got a bank card. There's nothing stopping her from getting a bank card. You know what? That's the funny thing when I look at... I mean, she could have done a lot of things. She could have contacted the... Orlando lady again about mm -hmm. the uh, Disney trip. She could have uh, contacted the MPP about the kids' passports. Mm -hmm. uh, she could have contacted the bank manager about the bank account. She could have gone online and uh, got the uh, the banking statements uh, from all those places. But the thing is, she doesn't. I don't know if it's because she's unable to or that she completely relies on you. I don't know, but she relies on you 100% to do all of those things. And it becomes incredibly clear, incredibly clear. And throughout all, e the, all these messages, and it's, it's unbelievable the deception that you have with her. And usually I find deception... A, uh, a quality that I, I, I don't admire. Mm -hmm. But when I read through all of those text messages and I see the state that she is in, mm -hmm. clinically depressed, mm -hmm. diagnosed with drugs, trying to cope 
with work, trying to cope with weight, trying to cope with self-image, trying to cope with Matthew, trying to cope with uh, not having a life because of the hours she works, trying to cope with all of those things. How can she cope if she ever knew truly? And that's why I tried to insulate her from it. You drive to the area of your parents, you park down the street, you walk up to the house, I don't know, unlock the door, check and see what the dog's reactions are, no, no barking, a little bit of shaking, but I'm good, nobody woke up, go back, practice, get your nerve up, go into the house, pour the fluid, fire the match, and boom, the fire goes up, you run out the door, as you get to the door, why you put them down, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know that. Um, you get back in your car and you drive home. And the reason why you do it is because you need money. Which I'm not going to see for years. And the fact that I'm leaving my house for two hours in the middle of the night to do this when and my wife gets up all the time, she comes down and says, where did you go for two hours in the middle of the night? On the night that your mother and Al get killed. But what you just finished telling me is that your wife takes sleeping pills. Yeah, but she gets up all the time. Well, then <laughs> why does she need pills to Talk wake to her, her up and get her going? Talk and to her doctor. Who's that walking in the ditch? I don't know. Don't recognize that person? Play it again? No. First of all, do you recognize this area? So that MSU surveillance, July 10th, mm -hmm. that's our Hamilton Police Service surveillance unit. Okay. And this is a video taken from their car. Who's that? I can't tell. Can't tell? Who do you think it might be? It looks like it could be me. It is you. That's you under surveillance July 10th. Mm hmm. So what were you doing walking in that ditch? I'd driven by there the day before after I heard my mom. I went for a drive with by myself. And when I got back, I realized something had flown out the window. Some papers had flown out the window, and I went back to see if they were there. Okay, so I'm sorry. Say, say that to me again. So this is the day that we found out. Um, after I found out, I went for a drive to the base. There was a baseball park close by, and I just went there and used to play baseball and was thinking of baseball and stuff like that. Went for a little drive on the stuff that I used to take the kids for a drive in the things. Had the windows down. Some papers blew out, and I was just like, whatever. And then the next day, I was like, oh, I was out driving again getting some stuff, and I was like, oh, I'll see if I can find paper. I didn't know what they were. They were just on the front seat, so. So, I mean, there's, a, the pictures are a little bit uh, mm -hmm. better when you're close up, but I mean, yeah, it's you, and this is our surveillance report. It shows it's Tuesday, July 10th. They're set up on you, Richard Taylor. They're set up at your address. And then it goes to list that they see you walking 
And the thing that is very clear about all these pictures, there's no cane. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about that. I left it in the car because walking through that stuff, you can get the cane would be very good. Okay, but where's where's the limp? I'm limping there. Like I don't know who you want to which, see. Which 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 leg is injured? Uh, it's my. A jury in Hamilton has found Richard Taylor guilty of two counts of first degree murder in the arson deaths of his mother, Carla Rutherford, and stepdad, Alan Rutherford. Taylor had pleaded not guilty to both first degree murder counts. He's been sentenced to the longest term for a first-degree murder conviction, life in prison with no chance of parole for at least 25 years to be served concurrently.